Hello and welcome back super mums. In today's video I'm going to be talking to you about the crazy ways that I stay motivated to get in the gym even when I don't want to. <laughs> please make sure you are liking sharing and subscribing so we can reach more mums and help them enjoy their motherhoods too fitness gym we are officially out of bikini season now so it's kind of like the motivation's gone no one's gonna see your stomach for a while you're a little bit less bothered like big baggy jumpers are coming we're in like our high-waisted jeans and like life is good life is good but fitness isn't all about feeling skinny or bikini body ready. It's about health for life. It's about having the energy to do the stuff with our kids that we want to. Maybe you have some sort of personal fitness goal. Maybe you want to train and run a marathon or something. For me, that's crazy. So something crazy like that. Uh, maybe like me, you're going on stage in a bikini in a beauty pageant in March. I have some quite some more standard, some slightly more bizarre ways that I do this that I thought I would share with you and maybe you'd like to try them and they could be helpful to you. So my number one is having when I'm going planned. It actually goes in the diary, in the schedule, and I don't like skipping things that are on my schedule, like it, it really bugs me. I love Google Calendar and I love time blocking and I have a specific colour for exercise, all my yellow bits are my workouts and I know in advance when they're going to be. My number two is knowing what they're going to be. Now for some people this could be a bad thing, but I, as I'm a qualified personal trainer, I have written my workouts to achieve the body I like. So even when it's not an exercise I like, I know why it's in there. If you've got someone else writing your program, get them to explain why they've put certain elements in, if they're elements you really don't like. Because you might not like them, but you like the output, and therefore you will start to like your workout more as a whole, because it's going to get you the output you want, um, or the results you want, or the physique you want, or the energy you want, whatever it is, get them to explain why it's in there. And if they can't give you a good reason, possibly find a better PT, or get them to rewrite it, or tweak it, or anything. If you're getting like online different ones, you're gonna to have to do the research yourself or grab a PT in the gym and say, look, this person has this physique and this is the workout they recommended. What does this thing that I hate do? They might be able to give you something else that does the same thing that you would like more as well. And actually, as long as you don't interrupt them during a session when they're training someone else or training themselves, personal trainers on the whole seem to like helping people. We do a lot of exercise, so we tend to be fairly happy people. Um, and again, if all the PTs in your gym are miserable, think about changing gyms, because maybe you could find a nicer one. <laughs> My number three is gym kit. Like, this is where like some people can get a bit funny because they're like, yeah, you should just be able to rock up and train in anything. And just like, you don't need to spend money on lots of fancy gym kit. And no, you don't. But for me, I find this a really good way to stay motivated. I like Lululemon and Fabletics. I have a Fabletics subscription. Um, so they're like a subscription thing. Um, and it's 44 in the UK, it's 44 pounds a month. And you sign, sign up and then between the first and the fifth of the month, you go on and they give you your top picks and you can either purchase one of the, like click one of those up to 44 pounds or pay the difference. Um, or you can skip a month or you can leave it and it takes the 44 pounds anyway. That just keeps it in like a rolling account so you're paying 44 pounds a month and then a few months down the line you can actually buy loads instead of getting bits each month i quite often will skip the months i don't want um or if i've got a month where i'm not spending very much i will let the money go into the account because i know i will always find something on fabletics i want so as something wears out i know that i've already saved it's like saving money for gym kit basically i've saved a bit of money as well but you can just opt out and not spend the money each month or you could go on and buy a few bits on your subscription leave it running for a month or two and then cancel like there's no tying contract all, at all but i find the quality is really good the range is really good they now post pictures of models in different shapes and sizes as well and on quite a lot of the items if you scroll down a bit on the actual individual product they'll have instagram photos of people that post themselves in the gym kit and this isn't just stick thin uh like influencers or anything like that it's I'll say normal people like people of all different shapes and sizes showing themselves wearing the item and what they've done in the item like saying oh, i've just been for running this and things like that so you can get a bit of a better insight into the product too so i love the fabletic stuff lululemon like i would get all my stuff from lululemon if i could afford to but they are at the higher end 
of fitness wear but I feel so special in my Lululemon stuff particularly bottoms like shorts all my shorts all my shorts are Lululemon so I've got some just like normal fitted ones and then I'm like I'm like moving my hands around here like you can see my short area um, <laughs> which you can't and I've got some like fitted shorts and and then I've got three pairs that are like the pants with the longer sort of I say the longer short they're still like just cover my butt shorts I get hot very easily in the gym I need to be comfortable um but I still feel and those ones I've had for a while now I still feel special when I put them on so that's fine as soon as I put a gym kit on and it stops making me feel special or good then I get rid of it because that is no way to stay motivated to get your butt in the gym and also you want to feel like you look good going into the gym even when you're into your fitness can be quite intimidating Rocking in feeling like you, you look good and you're comfortable in what you're wearing is a great way to help encourage you to keep going because you're going to feel more comfortable and like you belong there. So don't feel bad about wanting to look nice for the gym. I generally will wash my makeup off to go to the gym because I get very sweaty and I don't really want to suck that all into pores. But if you feel better with like your eyebrows drawn on and your eyeshadow done, I'd probably try and avoid like cover up and foundation and stuff. But do your... Do your eyebrows and your eyeshadow. If that's what's gonna give you the confidence to go in there like, pow, I'm ready for this. And like give you that little bit of extra motivation. Like totally do that, do that. Do what works for you. And for me, looking a certain way nice in the gym, not normally involving makeup for me, but um, hair like done up nicely in a really practical way, because it's gotta be out of my face and stuff, but, make, but not in a nice way. That for me is a big thing. Um, and yeah, making sure I'm happy that I look nice and I'm really comfortable in the gym uh, is very important too. My number four is good music. And that's not just about once you get there, that's on the way to it. So that could be putting your headphones on the way there, making sure you've got a really good playlist for in the car and things. When you're getting changed, it gets you all pumped up. It gets you excited. Some sort of like, yeah, I run the world. Um, yeah, run the world um, is a good one for that. Uh, What's my one at the moment? It's a Megan Trainer. Me too. I really like that. It gets me like quite pumped up at the moment. Uh, Sexy Lady by Jesse J. That gets me quite pumped up before a workout at the moment. I have a fight playlist. So I used to do quite a lot of com uh, combat-based workouts. I'm not at the moment, but I do have quite like an angry fight playlist that I can go to, sort of gangster rap type things, which isn't me. I'm more like pink and fluffy the rest of the time. Sometimes I'll listen to that, but it's like assessing your mood. What do you need to get yourself pumped up and energized to get there? I think we're on five, but a different number will appear if I'm wrong. I feel like I'm on five. Uh, and that for me is your like sustenance beforehand, knowing what works better for you. I can't have a massive meal and then go to the gym. Like I just want to sit on the sofa and go into a coma. And like some people need to eat before the gym. I would get a massive stitch when I got there, if I even got there, so that does not work for me. I take a pre-workout, I take a pre-workout called Grenade. It's probably one of the few chemical things in my like life and diet. It's normally the sort of thing that I would really avoid, but I don't with this one. And to be honest, there's not a massive rhyme or reason other than the fact that it makes me feel so much more excited to do my workouts. So you get like a tingly feeling on your skin, so you've kind of got to do something, otherwise it gets a bit irritating but it does give me the energy at the moment my workouts are just over two hours door to door so I live about 10 minutes from the gym it's about two hours door to door and I need that extra little boost to be able to up my game and at some point these workouts will feel a lot easier and I'll stop needing the pre-workout and I do some days not have it but particularly now I've moved from not training in the morning so I used to train first thing in the morning and it was much easier to just do all the other things and skip the pre-workout and just go straight to the gym because I'm training like some mid-morning, mid-afternoon, early evening, some later evening sessions. Like ugh, it's just a bit frustrating. I'm about to move into by this time this airs, I will have gone into a time of training the same time every day, Monday to Friday, and then a morning Saturday. And it's gonna literally be, I think it's like 1.45 to 3.45, and my kid's gonna be in, in in like a preschool thing. So I've got this two hour, like after lunch window. Bearing in mind I don't eat lunch till half 11. So I've got a half 11, have like a quick lunch and then 12 till 1.45 to like digest it and get going. I'm gonna need a pre-workout. I also take BCAAs, uh, BCAAs, uh, which are six tablets before my workout, six tablets afterwards. You can get like a drink ones as well. Um, but these extend my energy levels. 
blood just flew in my eye. Uh, extend like my energy levels, help me with muscle recovery and things afterwards. Um, do all the kind of magical things. But this will massively depend on the kind of workout you're doing. You might be going in for a 30 minute HIIT class. It's probably not, you're not gonna need all these extra supplementations and things like that. But, and like some people do some insane workouts without them, but it's looking at what your body needs and doesn't need pre and post workout to make you more motivated and excited to work out. I have my little routine. If I make up my pre-workout and I have my tablets and things, and then I know that I'm like ready to go. I have that, I go get changed and I'm off and done. Because so you take that like half an hour before. So half an hour before you've had to like, you know in that time, it's normally that last half an hour you talk yourself out of it. But I, by that point I've already taken my BCAAs and pre-workout. I've like gotta go. But that could be, you could have a certain drink, you could have an espresso and that's the one thing that like, that's gonna set off the chain of events that makes you get to the gym. So my number six is focusing on what you're gonna do first. So don't focus on the whole workout. Uh, when I write out my workouts, I always put at the top mobilization because that's the only thing I need to do. I don't worry about all the other psychotic, incredibly exhausting, strenuous stuff I'm gonna do afterwards. I focus on the fact that I'm going into the gym and I'm going to mobilize. Um, I will quite often not even put my trainers and socks on before I get in the gym. I take them in and um, Lululemon, got a lovely Lululemon. And um, they do these little bags that perfectly seem to fit in trainers, a water bottle and a sweat towel and like fitness gloves. And so I love this like perfectly sized trainer bag. Um, and I take that in with all my bits. I will leave, um, depending on what other shoes I've had on, I might leave them in a locker with my coat and stuff. Or if I'm just in flip flops in the summer, I'll, I'll wear my flip flops up um, and start my mobilization and then put my socks on and do a bit more mobilization and put my trainers on. And so by the time I'm ready, my body is also ready and warmed up. Um, it just, and by that point I'm like, well, I'm here, I'm gonna do the workout now. And then I'll focus on the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and just sort of work my way down the list. And that harks back to knowing what it is you're going in to do as well. Um, if you're going to do a class, get there that little bit early and find a corner or a space to do a bit of mobilization and stretching and dynamic stretching and things like that. I see that quite a lot. It takes people, they'll go in for a 30 minute hit class, but it takes them like the first 10 minutes to like actually physically be able to move and stuff. Maybe they've been sat at a desk all day or they've just got out of bed and things. Whereas I try and get there 15 minutes, at least 15 minutes before and do some like move through all the joints that I think I'm gonna use. If it's someone else's class, you don't necessarily know what you're gonna use, so just move through everything. Bit of dynamic stretching. Um, I see people come in, they'll do that, and then they jump on the treadmill, and they'll just sort of walk on the treadmill then until the class starts, and they can see where the class is from the treadmill sort of thing. Um, so maybe you take a skipping rope in with you, and you can just skip in the studio until your class starts, things like that. So though you're not you're going, as soon as you get there, you're getting into something as opposed to sitting down on the floor and waiting in a queue to go into a class. And then by the time you get in there, you're all sort of lethargic -y and like, ugh. Um, I mean, it's more of a, you might sit there and then make excuses and not even go into the class. So make sure you're going there, knowing what you're doing straight away as soon as you get there and make that your like absolute thing. I will add like a bonus one on how I stay motivated throughout my workout is I am now quite happily the one in a sports bra with midriff bearing. I always wanted to be one of those people, um, but I thought I needed a six pack and like a tight toned tummy to do it. And actually what I needed to do was just do it. Um, we're a bit jelly at the moment, like a bit more. I got it down a bit more just before we went on a holiday. Um, and then July was a bit manic with camping and birthdays and stuff that I ate loads of food. Um, and it, I went a bit backwards because the holiday was at the beginning of June. I'd worked really hard for that. Um, yeah, and then everything went back backwards in July, so I'm now sort of, I'm poking my stomach, but you can't see because my hands are out the window, get out the shot again. Um, but yeah, so I'm sort of working my way back. So there's definitely like no like six pack ab situation going on, but actually I find it really motivating to see the thing that's my least favorite, to see the area that I really want to work on, but also I get really hot in that section, my like mid sections where I hold all my heat. So having it bare actually keeps me a bit cooler. And that's another one for me is like, there's like hot, that sticky close hot. And then there's like sweaty, nice hot or sitting on a beach hot. So I guess there's three hots. Um, but that close hot I can't handle. And that for me is if I have my midriff covered, that's how I feel. So I definitely, yeah get that exposed and that one sorts that one out um, and then I'll also be the one that between sets I'll be dancing around to music I'm not I'll be like literally I'll be like in between sets with my headphones in 
and there'll be some like jiggy feet going on in between sets because that's what like keeps me energized and do the next set and yeah some people will look at me going if you didn't waste that energy you could be lifting heavier if you didn't waste that energy that would be there yeah but if i didn't keep myself entertained and energized and happy the other thing would just wouldn't happen at all and same i'll be like singing on the treadmill not out loud um i don't run on the treadmill at the moment my routine includes a lot of fast steep hill climbs a max incline on the treadmill of just under running pace walk and um, and i'll sing along and that keeps me motivated in the gym so there you go so there's some in the gym bonus ones but the other ones are it's about getting there once you get there and do something it's better than nothing even a bad workout is better than no workout i would love to hear if you've got any tricks and tips of your own please pop them in the comments down below i look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood and remember being a super mum, it's all about being the mum that you want to be. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.